Welcome back to Logic 101, I'm William Spaniel, and this lecture is my first killer proof strategy, which is to De Morgan's everything. To see why this is useful, let's look at the following problem. We have two premises here, first one not, T or not, P implies Q, and Q implies R. And what we're trying to do here is show that P implies R and not T. So I've already told you that the theme for this lecture is to De Morgan's everything. So maybe if you'd like to, you should pause the lecture right now and try to solve this problem on your own. And if you would like to, it would be nice for me to see what you're thinking in the comments section below. So go ahead and try to prove this one on your own and give me your responses if you would like to. And regardless of whether you've completed that or not, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do this and show you why using De Morgan's here is so useful. If we think back to our last lecture when we first introduced proofs, that particular problem had a whole lot of premises. So there was a lot to work with there. Here, in contrast, it doesn't appear that there's that much to work with. And in fact, that's not the case if you try De Morgan's Zang here. So killer proof strategy number one is if you are stuck, De Morgan's everything that you can. And the reason that this is helpful is it turns disjunctions into conjunctions. It turns or statements that look very complicated into much simpler and statements. And when you have simpler and statements, those and statements can be broken up. Conjunctions can be broken up and simplified into their component parts. And suddenly what looks like not very many premises at all after you've de Morgan some stuff becomes a whole bunch of and statements, which is a lot of stuff you can then work with. So let's see that here. Let's go back to the problem and let's look at the first line where we can apply De Morgan's to that because we have an or statement there and if we try De Morgan'sing it, it will turn the or statement into an and statement. And remember when you use De Morgan's, you just distribute the negation. So we distribute the negation first to the T, so we have not T, and then instead of having an or, the negation is the flipping of that, so we go to a conjunction there, and then if we distribute the negation one more time, we have not not P implies Q. So that was our first step, it was to De Morgan's what we could, and then remember, when you have these AND statements, your next step in this algorithm is to break up the AND statements into their component parts. So on line four here, let's just break up that third line. Instead of having not T AND not not P implies Q, we can just erase the second half and we're left with not T through simplification. And we can do the same thing to the second half of line three. So we have not not P implies Q. And then, of course, not, not, that's a double negation. So if we want to simplify line five a little bit more, we can get to P implies Q through double negation. So all we've done so far, without even trying to think about how we're trying to actually prove that conclusion, right? We're not even thinking about the conclusion yet. We're just messing around with De Morgan's to see what De Morgan's can do for us. And already on line four, without even thinking about what's going on with the conclusion, we've already done half of the problem. The conclusion is asking us to prove two different things, P implies R, as well as not T. We've already proven not T through De Morgan's and some simplification, so we're good to go there, which means now all we have left to do is figure out how to show that P implies R. And again, De Morgan's really helped us out here. If we look at line six, we're left with P implies Q. And if you look back up to line two, we have Q implies R. So that gives us this situation where we have P implies Q, which implies R. And if you remember back to another rule of inference, we know that we can cut out the middleman in that case. So we get P implies R through lines two and six, applying hypothetical syllogism. And you'll notice now that our work is done. We want to prove that P implies R and not T. We've done each of those individually. So if we just conjoin them together, we have P implies R and not T through lines four and seven, applying our rule of conjunction. And we are done now. So once more to recap, my first number one top killer proof strategy for you is if you are stuck, when in doubt, use De Morgan's rule, see what you can get out of it, and maybe you'll have a whole bunch of and statements that can be broken up into simpler parts, which then will be very useful for you when you're trying to actually prove whatever it is the question is asking for you. Hope you enjoyed this and I hope to see you next time. Take care.